if you could explain how your involvement with Felix Baumgartner came about and at what point along his journey he needed you. Okay, that's really cool. And so let me add one more contextual bit of information. I love reference points and context to try to better understand anything in life. And so one more bit of context is that I said earlier, sport and performance psychology. So I'm classically trained as a psychologist, but the subspecialty is in consequential environments, which means that when people make mistakes, the most dire consequences can take place. Doesn't mean that they will, but they can take place. So Felix Baumgartner and the Rebel Stratus program certainly is one of the most consequential environments um, that I've, I've worked in. And let's just ground it. it I, I spent time with Red Bull High Performance, kind of the origin story of, of their building of their high performance program. And I was uh, able to work with some extraordinary people for about a decade in the Red Bull athletic space. And it was about four years into the Red Bull Stratus project where Felix called the team. I was not part of the team at this point. Felix called uh, his team and he was in the airport and he was breaking down. And I say that with quote unquote, because he was breaking through. We just didn't know it at the time. And he was crying in the airport. And this is all public. Um, there was many documentaries done about this. And uh, he's crying in the airport and saying, hey, team, I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry. I, I just can't take another step forward. And um, it's too much for me. And fear had overridden his ability to manage the duress and the stress and the pressure, which is a normal thing for anybody that's trying to push right to the edges of their capabilities. And in this case, it was the edge of human capabilities. This makes sense. This happens. <laughs> this is part of it. And um, there is... <laughs> There is no pushing limits without getting to a limit. And so the team goes, right, okay, so let's find the right resource here. And they introduced me to, the, uh, to Felix. Um, Felix and I had a good, converse, good conversation about what he really wanted. And he wanted to go forward, even if it meant him dying. He just didn't have the ability to deal with that pressure. And um, of course, nobody wants to die, but it was like, um, great clarity that walking away this way was not the way he wanted to um, complete this project. So then uh, he and I are like, okay, well, I think we can do some work here. And we presented this option to the full team. And the full team was some of the hardened most, uh, I mean, some of the greatest um, aerospace engineers and test pilots in the world. And they clearly looked at me like I had five heads and they said, look, we do not, we don't know about this psychology thing. <laughs> you know, these are, this is the old guard, right? And they're like, we don't know, like all due respect to your profession. And um, we just don't want blood on our hands. And we've never seen somebody come back from this type of emotional reaction to being in a capsule. And so that was his fear is the sense of claustrophobia because he had to be basically in a, in a, um, what you would see an, an astronaut in, that type of suit, uh, for five to six hours. And he had to be in a pressurized capsule for five to six hours. And it was this feeling of being out of control and claustrophobia was the triggering for, for his fear and stress response. So they said, listen, no, no, um, no disrespect, but never seen anyone come back from it. And um, we do not want blood on our hands because you convinced him or you've you know, and I'm like, listen, that's not what the science of psychology is. This is not about motivation. This is not about convincing or some sort of dark art to kind of twist his mind to actually stay in the capsule. It's not that. It's a basic psychological skills building and basic um, principles that he can work from to build those skills. And I can get into what psychological skills mean in just a minute. So they said... Um, he said, but we'll, we'll give this a shot as long as he can do the things that we need him to do in a low pressure environment on the ground. So in other words, he has to be in a suit for six hours on the ground where up until that point, he couldn't be in it for longer than five minutes. So game on. So we go to work. We use really good science, which is uh, the science of systematic desensitization, also known as flooding. And essentially it's like, give somebody the right tools to be able to manage themselves in 
a stepwise approach of stress. So you start working these psychological skills in low pressure and then work it all the way up to high pressure. And then you take a leap into the condition that you actually need to think clearly in. Okay, so that's how we do all, all skill development. Whether it's sport, we start free throw shooting in a calm environment and then we put free throw shooting, you know, with a little bit more heart, elevated heart rate and free throw shooting practice, you know, with like some sort of stakes on the line. And then we're better at it when it's game time. So we do that skill development for physical and technical skills. This is no different. This is just psychological skills building. We deploy it um, at, and he cracked it. He did it. He did the thing in low pressure environments, meaning he was in the suit in the capsule for five plus hours. Um, you know, champagne and beer were flowing right after that. It was a major milestone. Then they took him to the next level, still on the ground, but in a pressurized capsule, which if you make mistakes there, getting your, he was responsible for managing his oxygen and, and gas exchange. And if you make a mistake there, things can go wrong pretty quickly. He did it there. So again, you know, uh, champagne and cocktails after that, it was a, it was a nice moment of celebration. And at, in my mind, he had all, he had extinguished his fear. And so the day of the actual launch, which was about four years later, um, he had extinguished this fear that he had of being claustrophobic. And it was just basic at that point, it was a celebration of, of uh, all that he has achieved. So that, that was kind of the arc and the narrative. I inserted um, my um, science and, and contributions about four years into the seven or eight year cycle.